Hello and welcome to Tuesday DJ Gig Tips, brought to you by Vibo, the music planning app. You're going to hear some noises down here because we're in the shop, so I apologize for that. You may hear the furnace kick in or someone walking upstairs. It's just what it is. Oh, there goes the furnace on cue. Today we're going to talk about using an Amazon Fire tablet, a $99 tablet, as either a backup or for ceremony or cocktail music. It's a really inexpensive way to go. They're incredibly durable. I like them. I've been using them for a while. But the reason I got my original one right here, which is a 2017 model, I believe, is because I wanted to do exactly what you're seeing here. I wanted to be able to, you know, stream XM, because I'm a Sirius XM subscriber, and Bluetooth that to, you know, a battery-powered speaker or a Bluetooth speaker. On the porch, in the backyard, we have company, whatever. I wanted to be able to sit on the sofa and surf the web, do things like go on Facebook. And I also wanted to be able to, you know, watch TV with my cable app or Netflix or Disney Plus or whatever you have, you know. But I needed a solution to do battery-powered ceremony. I couldn't use the Amazon Fire tablet because I couldn't download the DJ app that I wanted to use because the tablet does not have the Google Play Store. This is set up for Amazon. So it's Amazon App Store and DJ from Algorithm is not available there. However, there is a way to put the Google Play Store on any Fire tablet. I could do a tutorial on this, but there are plenty of people out there on YouTube who've done fine tutorials on these. And sometimes the app changes on these things and there's new ways to install the Google Play Store. It's not really hard. Sometimes it's a matter of copying links in order and just installing the links in order. Sometimes it's a matter of plugging the machine in to turn it into a complete Android tablet. You can make it as simple or as complicated as you want. I've done it both ways. This one I'm with the full Android thing on. It was convoluted and I didn't need to do it. This one I just did four simple download links installed them and I have the Google Play Store and I was able to install DJ. Let me show you what that looks like. So after going through the process and installing the Google Play Store you can indeed download the DJ program DJAY from Algorithm. It's changed. I used to have it looking kinda like this, right? This is the version I paid for. This is actually DJ2. I think it was $2.99 for the app. The new version is a little different. There's cool stuff on here. There's a nice mixer and there's nice features. There's also a paid version that you can get. I've got the same one running on this machine up here. And you know, it works incredibly well. It's very stable. Scott Davies, the co-founder of ADJ, turned me onto this program over 10 years ago. He was showing it to me at NAM, we were sitting at the Sheridan bar. He had his iPad there and he was showing me how stable it was and how cool it was and how impressed he was by it. So I downloaded it on my iPad, which I had at the time, and I played around with it. Never really had a use for it. And then, again, when we started doing battery powered ceremony systems and the compact stuff, I thought I was going to get an iPad and download this program until I discovered that, you know, I could actually do it on Android too. And I could do it on a $99 tablet, which is pretty amazing. You know, the iPad, I know a lot of people out there like them. And a lot of people in the comment section are going to be talking about them. Yeah, use an iPad if you want to. Aside from the price, like I was mentioning before, they're very durable. You can drop them and they're very forgiving. You can sit on them, whatever, give them to a toddler to throw around. You're not going to hurt the things. And, you know, I need something that sturdy like that for the road. So this is perfect. Now you can even get smaller ones. You can get, I think it's an eight and a seven. They're much smaller, they cost a little less. These are tens. Although you can get them with 32 gig memory or 64 gig memory. The cool bit is you can also put your own micro SD card in these things. And as of 2021, you can go up to a one terabyte micro SD card and load all of your tracks on here you want. Maybe instead of putting your money into a giant one terabyte card, you might want to consider putting your money into a fast card 
that's smaller. The card I have in here right now is 120 gig. I might be using 2% of that card with the tracks I have on there. Like I said, I've just got some backup stuff on there just in case. I've got ceremony stuff. I've got some classical. I've got some cocktail music. Not a lot. If you get a fast card, the tablet's going to read it a lot better. You're going to be able to use your files a lot quicker. If you go try to throw all kinds of tracks onto a micro SD card, especially if it's not very fast, you might have some problems. So I would go with a good quality card even if it has a smaller capacity. Now some people have said I used to use DJ but I don't anymore because you can't run Spotify on it. Well no, Spotify is a consumer platform and it's great for home listening or through your headphones but for professional broadcast audio I don't think Spotify ever gave us any real cool clean music files but Tidal does and this does support Tidal now, which is really nice. So if you're a Tidal subscriber and you want to stream your music, you can do that. What you could do if you wanted to is, say, tether your phone to it, make your phone a hotspot, and then log on to that hotspot with your tablet, and you're somewhere in the middle of a cornfield with signal, and you're streaming. You can absolutely do that if you want to. I put all my music on that micro SD card that I mentioned earlier. And I like to own it. That's just me. I'm not a streamer. If you are, that's cool. Do you? I just don't want to do it. But it is possible with Tidal. When it comes to loading tracks onto the tablet, you can either use the USB cable and do it that way directly into your computer, or you can pop the micro SD card out of this machine, put it in a micro SD card reader, put it directly into your computer, and you get super quick transfers that way. I prefer doing it that way, but you can do it however you want. Some of you may be concerned with Q. I'm not because of how I'm using the app. Ceremonies, remote cocktail. I'm not mixing with it or whatever, but if you want to Q with it, and you're trying to figure out how to do it, it's possible. It's easier if you get the DJ Pro on an iPad. But if you want to go this route, get yourself a little splitter cable like this. It's stereo mini on one side, and it's got these two guys that shoot out. What's going on with this is, bear with me, it turns your stereo signal into a mono signal. So let's say that your mini plug or your mini cord comes out of this side and goes to your speaker. This is where you plug your headphones in. If you're here, right, your main signal is coming out here, this is what's being played, this is What's coming out this side? That's your cue side. The audience can't hear it. As soon as you move your crossfader over, it switches. Where this becomes your cue side, which still comes out of this one, and this becomes your playback side, which the audience is hearing. I know it's goofy and convoluted, but it's a workaround. I've never had to use it, but I did buy it and test it at home. And the part that was driving me nuts is, the volume was super loud, right? Because there's no volume adjustment. So I bought this dumb little thing here. So it actually has a little volume knob on it. It's stereo mini on one side, stereo output, but it's got a volume knob. So I could plug this into the Q side, if this were indeed the Q side, and I don't know which is which, you gotta test it to figure it out. Plug your headphones into here, right? And when you want to cue and turn the volume down, you can do that right here. Now, how do you make this tablet work like this? It's in the settings menu. So, you go into settings. You go into signal output. Enable split output for pre-cueing with headphone adapter. You simply turn that on, and it allows you to do this. Now speaking of settings, when you first turn this thing on, you load it in, you turn it on, you load a track, it's going to start automatically, but you can go into the settings up here, and you can change all that. Might have to stop this up before we go into settings. There we go. Settings. And if you go into things like general, 
There are things like play immediately. You can turn that off. Jump start to cue. There's all kinds of stuff. And even the stop feature, when you press pause on one of these decks, it slows down like you just turned off a record. Like, Mrr. you can actually adjust that by seconds. I've got it at 0.5 seconds. You can make it zero. You can make it longer. You can do whatever you want. Same thing with start. You can make start act like it's a turntable just turning on. Mrr. You can adjust it to do whatever you want. So you're not stuck with whatever the app gives you right when you load it. You can go in and make a lot of changes. Now you can absolutely Bluetooth this tablet to something like a powered speaker that has Bluetooth connectivity. For gigging, I don't recommend it. For personal use, yeah, fine. But for gigging, I wouldn't do it. There was latency on the old machine. I'm sure the new machine is better, but here's the thing. I want to go ahead and eliminate as many weak links as I can. In Bluetooth, in a room full of people who may have Bluetooth devices on them, might be a weak link. I mean, that frequency might be getting a little crowded at a party or a wedding or something. So if I've got it hardwired, I'm not competing for bandwidth with anyone else. Now, because this is an Android app, it'll work on any Android device, including your phone. And this will come up in a minute. There's DJ. I've had it on my phone for quite a few years, and it functions as it should. The problem with using your phone as backup or for a ceremony or anything else I feel is number one it's small I mean this is quite a bit bigger right number two I don't think it looks professional at all to be staring at your phone at any given time when you're working even if you are actually doing something productive on your phone it doesn't matter if you're staring at your phone the perception is nah you're just staring at your phone where I think a tablet on a stand set up right makes a lot more sense and some people may say well no I want to use a laptop because people expect that Jim Cerrone mentioned that. And you know what? If that's what you think people really want, you go ahead and do it. But I don't think people are paying attention to that kind of stuff personally. I think that, you know, really, ultimately, if you're not staring at your phone, you're okay. They don't know what this program is. They don't know the speaker you're using. It's still science fiction to them. Yeah, they might have an Amazon tablet at home, but who's looking at your gear when you're DJing a wedding ceremony? You're not the center of attention, and if you are, you're probably doing something wrong. The bride and groom should be the center of attention. You should be the man behind the curtain. And you could use something like this behind the curtain while you're there, and no one will know the difference. But yeah, I mean, if you don't have any backup, or if you're looking for an easy ceremony solution, something like this might work really well for you. Again, I don't think you have to step up to the high dollar machines. There's a $129 version of this one that has an extra gig of RAM and then there's like a hundred and sixty some dollar version That has more internal memory, but like I said SD card solves that problem So I don't believe that you need to ever buy one of these machines with more internal memory Because SD is a heck of a lot cheaper to get a hold of than that is So anyway, I don't know just a quick video for you if you have any questions answers whatever Let me know in the comments section again as far as getting the Google Play Store in here. I could do a video for you, but really there are some fine videos out there for you to look at. If you just search for them, I'll put a couple recent ones down here in the description of the video that you can have a look at. I'll show you the two that I used. One's pretty convoluted and more than I really needed. Another one is super easy and should work with any tablet. In the meantime, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Hit the like button if you don't mind and subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you next time. Take care, practice, and enjoy.